Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down game four of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics. But before we get started with today's episode, if you guys are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on any other podcast streaming platform, make sure to download our episode, share the episodes with your friends. Make sure to also give us a five star rating and a nice review as well. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like, comment and subscribe and turn on post notification and, you know, just continue to support the YouTube channel as we look to grow. But without further ado, let's get started with Game 4's breakdown, right? Miami out the gate. It looked like they lacked a sense of urgency. All in all, I, I believe that Miami came into Game 4 content with the fact that, you know, they were able to steal Game 3. And given, you know, this is a team that has home court advantage to begin the series. So I think, you know, coming into tonight, a little bit of complacency, I would say, to a certain degree. And Boston, they just did a good job in terms of coming out the gate and playing with a lot of urgency, right? You saw guys like Grant. Grant Williams, Robert Williams, Al Horford, you know, do a lot on the offensive glass tonight. And, you know, just the defensive rebounds. Boston was plus 21 from that aspect. Boston, <clears throat> for the entirety of this postseason, one thing that I can say about them that's been very unique, they found ways to win ugly ball games, right? And what I mean by that is, you know, Boston to finish the night, you know, despite them winning by 18, 20 plus points, you know, they did not shoot the basketball well tonight. They shot 39% from the field, 23% from beyond the arc, not shooting the basketball efficiently right within this series. But one thing that they've been able to hang their hat on is, you know, their shot attempts at the free throw line, which doubled Miami from that standpoint. Miami only eight for 14 from the free throw line tonight. Boston, 34 of 38, I believe, shooting around 85% from that aspect. Miami's half court offense has definitely been a problem, right? We understand, you know, in the absence of Tyler Hero, Victor Oladipo was going to be a guy that they were going to lean on a little bit more to, you know, initiate that second unit. And I think, you know, one thing that Miami's half-court offense definitely needs, a lead guard who can not only, you know, dictate pace like Kyle Lowry's able to do, but, you know, find guys and put them in positions to score the basketball. Bam at a bio, he should never go into a half with three or two shot attempts. And I'm not even saying it's necessarily Kyle Lowry's fault. I think a part of it has to do with the way that Miami's half-court offense is built. They're more of a, similar to the Utah Jazz and the Golden State Warriors, they're more of a reactionary offense, right? You know, things aren't necessarily very stationary like we understand Boston in a half court setting first possession might be a Jason Tatum pick and roll with him getting all the way to the basket or looking for other guys you know score out of those actions right then the following play it might be Jalen Brown coming off of a handoff action on the opposite wing looking to you know get a smaller guy on him or take advantage of slower footed big that way he can shoot over the top of those guys in those one-on-one single coverage actions right and then you know even on the third option in those situations it might be a swing to the opposite corner or wing to Peyton Pritchard or Grant Williams, you know, things of that nature, right? But Miami, they just don't have an offense that runs like that. It's a lot of dribble handoff action. You're gonna get some pistol integrated into that, pinned down to a ball screen. And Boston defensively, they're giving them space to, you know, knock down these shots on the perimeter, right? You know, tonight they didn't shoot the basketball all that well from outside. Miami was able to, you know, take advantage of that. But, you know, Miami's going to have to find more versatile ways to score the basketball in this series, right? You know, they can't be just so heavily reluctant on their three-point shooting, although they didn't shoot a lot of them tonight. This is a team that struggles scoring around the mid-range area, right? This is a team that's more so looking to, you know, either kill you from outside or get all the way to the rim. And in those instances, Boston, they have have the size advantage without Horford, Robert Williams. If you want to integrate Daniel Tyson to the mix, you can do that as well. But you know, Boston, they're just overmatching them from that aspect, right? You know, Robert Williams athleticism, not only is taking away dribble penetration, getting all the way to the rim with guys like, you know, Jimmy Butler or say a Kyle Lowry or whomever looking to, you know, put any level of pressure on the rim. Robert Williams and Al Horford, you know, they just done a phenomenal job in terms of, you know, being able to deteriorate shots around the basket for Miami in this series, right? And I think in those instances, that's when the Tyler Heroes of the world are going to really mean a lot to you. And Miami's one of the few teams in the NBA that actually looks like they rely a little bit more on their second unit for scoring as opposed to their first unit. 
because you know in the first unit you know you got pj tucker notable point of attack defender max Struess, not the most dynamic guy offensively but you know he can do a little bit out of a handoff as far as getting all the way downhill but they don't have a lot of guys who are going to hit you with you know any secondary moves if you cut off their initial drive right and i think you know miami leans on tyler hero and victor oladipo to be those guys for them in the second unit and they weren't able to get you know tyler hero's production tonight obviously due to injury he wasn't able to suit up tonight but in those instances miami just has to be better right they have to find an alternative way to you know just improve in their half court setting right victor oladipo he was able to step up tonight you know he finished the game with 23 points he was miami's leading scorer but you know his production alone is not going to be enough especially when you're going up against jason tatum a guy who's you know affecting the ball game and essentially all dynamics right being a good defender on the defensive side of the basketball being able to you know utilize his size and intangibles to, you know limit the opposing players on miami's end from scoring the basketball or you know just making it tough from them you know this is a guy offensively like i mentioned earlier in the episode gonna do a lot of things at the top of the key being an initiator of your offense for you has shown signs of improvement in, as far as a playmaker and although he's still learning the nuances of the game from that aspect this is a guy that you can count on to you know have multiple ways to affect the game in all dynamics right but you know with that being said miami bam at a bio he has to be better i think al horford took it personal that he was able to drop 31 points on him the previous game right he made a conscious effort to you know try to limit him offensively tonight and he definitely was able to do that right and a part of that is just you know boston defensive scheming right i mentioned how you know tyler hero he's typically a guy that miami likes to lean on to offensively right well tyler hero with him not being in today's game you know boston was able to remain in that drop coverage defensively coming out of the pick and roll for miami's side for the entire 48 minutes of tonight's game you know there wasn't a lot of actions where you know they had to pressure up or hedge or anything like that on these dribble handoff or pick and roll actions with them and with that being said tyler hero as your initiator within your pick and roll he definitely is one of the few guys on miami's end that can affect the game and help collapse boston celtics defense from that perspective right and you know they're definitely missing out on those type of things but you know like i said let's talk about what boston was able to do tonight defensively sitting in drop coverage for the entirety of the night not only did it force miami to you know make shots around the basket a little bit tougher tonight and you know kind of bait them into taking a little bit more mid-range shots boston was also able to take away the production from bam Adebayo and pj tucker in a short row right bam Adebayo and pj tucker they weren't able to take advantage of that same thing with jimmy butler you know butler sometimes in those instances they have him do some screening action where he's going to be the role man and hope that you know they can get the defense to shift from that aspect or you know force a switch because butler's able to you know, make the proper reads you know keep miami's heads above water out of those instances right but you know this was another game where jason tatum was you know just treat to watch offensively right you know this was his third game out of the four games in this series where he scored 20 or more points in the first half and miami honestly they don't really have an answer for him outside of pj tucker but boston's doing such a great job just utilizing that pick and roll and being able to get lesser defenders on tatum that way he's able to you know still be as effective as he can from an offensive perspective right but miami went to two one a few times and i think you know boston was doing a good job of attacking the seams of their zone sometimes you know boston will find a way to get baited into three pointers but tonight i think they just really did a great job in terms of you know attacking the painted area because miami along with boston like i mentioned you know they're one of the four teams in the nba gave up the most points in a painted area this year and with that being said i'm curious as to what adjustments eric spolstra can make to you know kind of shift the series back into you know miami's favor from an x's and o's standpoint there weren't really a lot of things that stood out within this particular game as broad as that sounds but you know tonight was really about urgency and effort if you're miami were you going to have subsequent enough rotations unfortunately miami they just weren't able to have the advantage of any of those aspects and you know boston them being at home them being down 2-1 in the series heading into tonight's matchup they made a conscious effort to you know play methodically but also you know just be the more hard-working team out there tonight and you know x's and o's standpoint they really didn't have to do anything too drastic obviously with tyler hero's absence that definitely helped them limit miami because we know him and oladipo in a half court setting they can do a lot of damage and you know those are the guys that typically will make a conscious effort in trying to chip down these leads but you know with the, all that stuff being said i expect eric spolstra in miami he you know have a better showing in game five obviously going back home in south beach two more points i want to make before i close out the episode though today jimmy butler the knee inflammation uh, i'm hearing a lot of people talk about maybe that was why he wasn't able to play well tonight honestly in my opinion i wasn't able to watch the previous game three and see the injury happen in real time but based off what i've seen butler do in this series honestly i didn't see much of a difference in terms of his limitations from a physical standpoint right now granted the six point game definitely makes you think otherwise but honestly in my opinion i feel like you know jimmy butler 
in the Miami Heat. It just wasn't their night tonight, all in all. And a player whose name that constantly keeps coming up in conversation over the course of this series has been Duncan Robinson, right? In my opinion, I don't feel like Duncan Robinson is a guy who's going to have that much of a true impact or enough of an impact at all to really alter the conclusion of this series at all. I mean, understandably, we know this is a guy that typically is going to shoot around 40 percent from three-point range but you know he's definitely been inconsistent from that standpoint but defensively you know his impact from that aspect it's far more detrimental to have him on the floor in those instances where you know he could potentially be hunted out in pick and rolls switches with jason tatum or jalen brown as ball handlers and things of that nature right with all that stuff being said duncan robinson isn't a guy that's going to alter this series whatsoever i doubt he has even minimal impact to be honest with you guys so i'm not one of those big advocates that you know duncan robinson needs more minutes i think max Struess has been really good as a replacement in the starting lineup over duncan robinson and Struess has had some really good moments within this series too he did a really good job as far as being able to help contain jason tatum in that first matchup all in all he's having a positive enough effect so i don't expect duncan robinson to you know have a change in roles over the course of this series but you know with that being said Derek white he definitely had the game of his life tonight boston was playing tatum off ball a lot more than they usually would i've been an advocate for that i've actually wanted Derek white to you know have a little bit of more responsibility in terms of handling the basketball only when you know marcus smart is out of the game but boston almost overdid it tonight but all in all Derek white you know he's phenomenal on both sides of the floor really contributed a lot especially in that first quarter along with jason tatum from that aspect and you know with jalen brown struggling shooting the basketball tonight i believe he was five for 20 finished the game with 12 points they really needed that production out of Derek White tonight. And all in all, the rest of the guys fell in line. Robert Williams and Al Horford controlling things in the painted area. Peyton Pritchard knocking down his shots from outside. And Jason Tatum looking like a top five talent out there. So with that being said, I feel really good about my Celtics in six pick. And all in all, hopefully Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics can, you know, handle business in game five and game six. And, you know, ultimately not prolong this series. That way we can move on to the NBA Finals and see the two best teams in the NBA compete at the highest level. But with that being said, thank you guys for tuning into another episode with me here on the Ball Fake Podcast. If you guys are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on any other podcast streaming platform, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notifications, and give us a nice review on all podcast streaming platforms and a five-star rating. But besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. You're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast, and we out. Praise God.